This morning, we're spotlighting the case of an ex-Marine accused of murdering his girlfriend by strangling her and then fleeing the country. A judge ruled that Raymond McLeod will stand trial after a three-day long preliminary hearing last week. Famous psychiatrist Dr. Drew Pinsky testified in the hearing about the defense's theory of choking during rough sex. Now, before we get to that, Court TV's Matt Johnson has more for us on the background of this case. I remember that night when I got that phone call. I mean, this is, you know, I've been on the side where I had to give the message to parents. Sometimes I didn't want to give the message that the child has been murdered. And I'm on this side. The day her daughter was murdered was the day former police detective Josephine Wenzel came out of retirement. On June 10, 2016, 30-year-old Crystal Mitchell was found dead in a San Diego apartment. Crystal was in town visiting friends and traveling with a man that she recently met, a former Marine named Raymond, R.J. McLeod. There was nothing to alert her that he was a terrible person. What Crystal did not know is that McLeod had a disturbing history of violence against women. On June 10th, 2016, the pair was drinking at a local bar where a bystander witnessed McLeod slap Crystal. Shortly after, McLeod is captured on surveillance video, putting his hands around Crystal's neck and guiding her into the apartment where her body would be discovered later that day. The strangulation was so violent that there were three separate fractures to her voice box. McLeod then took her car. Okay, that was Matt Johnson reporting there for us. I have a great guest standing by to help us analyze uh, these actions of Raymond McLeod, his past history, and the expert testimony that came in during that hearing. I want to welcome in board-certified forensic psychiatrist, Dr. Carol Lieberman. Dr. Carol, good morning. It's great to see you. Good morning. Good I want morning, to start, Julie. Oh, thank you. I want to start by uh, playing a couple pieces of evidence for you from that preliminary hearing where the prosecution got to introduced two prior incidents of Raymond McLeod strangling two other different women during sex. Let's take a look. Evidence will show that it took several people to actually pull the defendant off Rachel and stop him from strangling her. They got him into the hallway and he still tried to go after her and again started strangling her again. At that point, they were able to pull him off of her they got him out of the house and called police. I said, yes, she could sleep in my room. She said she was scared. And he was very angry that Rachel was in the bedroom with me and demanded that she go and sleep in the bedroom that I had given them as a guest room. I unlocked the door and he was on top of her. She was gurgling. Her lips were blue. She was no longer able to speak and was struggling to breathe. Oh my, okay, so Rachel is the defendant's ex-wife. Uh, and I kept thinking these uh, clips were pertaining to two different women. Uh, the other two incidents that are coming into this as well, uh, acts of domestic violence uh, are involving uh, women besides Rachel. So uh, this defendant, has a history here. It, it seems that uh, more than one uh, person has reported violence uh, with him as an intimate partner. Dr. Carroll, what does that say to you about Raymond McLeod? Well, first of all, it says that this is unlikely consensual um, uh, sex, you know, that his idea of consensual rough sex is um, these women's idea and, and uh, apparently more likely uh, not consensual. I mean, you know, consensual rough sex, when you when that happens, and, and actually, you know, that really is typically for the women, it has to do with um, traumas that they had as a child that they are unconsciously recreating in, in agreeing to rough sex. Um, but if you, you know, if you are going to have consensual rough sex, and you have to define ahead of time what that means, what that includes, and you have to have a safe word, 
so that if the woman says whatever you decide the safe word is, that the man knows to stop. None of this was present there. I mean, it certainly doesn't seem so. And it's with this history of his having uh, been accused in, of, of um, domestic violence in the past and the divorces of his wife, and also the events of that day leading up to uh, their going to bed. This is really helpful, Dr. Carroll. I want to show you a clip from Dr. Drew Pinsky's testimony. He was called as a defense witness to talk about how common strangulation is in intimate partner relationships and the dangers associated with it. Let's take a look. Using some way of restricting the airway to enhance sexual arousal and orgasm. And how common is that? Very common. 73% of sexually active college undergraduate women reported having been choked. Uh, also reported that among male and female undergraduate with sexual experience, 43% had choked a partner. Mm, Dr. Carroll, what's your reaction to what Dr. Drew just shared? I, I disagree with that. Um, very common. I mean, first of all, the 73%. You know, yes, it is more common in younger people these days, like in college age people. But, uh, and that's because of a number of things. You know, one, as I was saying, there women have had rape fantasies. The idea that um, I didn't want to do this, I, I gave in because, you know, I surrendered. But it was... Uh, it was to the, this man who was t over, I was so attractive that I overpowered him. I mean, I overpowered him in the sense that he um, did this to me. You know, I, he couldn't control himself, that kind of thing. Um, also, as I was saying before, it has to do with their, you know, childhood uh, experiences that then that they associate or that were sexual that they then are unconsciously drawn to repeat, but then it re-traumatizes them. But you know why there are more people? I mean, it's not like <laughs> as common as Dr. Drew would have us believe, you know, not that everybody's doing it. Um, but one of the things that really brought it into the consciousness um, was the movie, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey. And there's and the sequel. That's what made it look cool. You know, everybody. It made it seem like a like an everyday thing and like a cool thing. And that's what increased the popularity of it. Dr. Carroll, I believe it. I believe. It. I remember the hype when first it was the books that came out and everybody right. was rushing to buy the books, and then it was on the big screen. I. I I can see that. Um, I want to back up just a second. This is really fascinating what you're sharing. You shared that how um, research has shown that when women engage in rough sex with a partner, it's pertaining to their past uh, trauma, trying to recreate traumatic history. Is it the same with male partners or is it different? Well, hmm. Um, it's different. I mean, well, there are things in a man's childhood too, or his life, that would make him want to be that aggressive with a woman. For example, uh, you know, if if he had, if if he had felt um, that that a woman, particularly that a woman like his mother, um, had been aggressive to him, obviously not sexually, but I mean, you know, that he had been controlled controlled by a woman or women in his life. I mean, here he is a, a Marine, and certainly he had his opportunities to express his aggression in a good way, in a socially you know, positive way, um, protecting our country. But, um, but there's some, yes, there definitely is, if someone takes it that far, and, and at least at least two women, of course, they're gonna bring women in who said that they had rough sex with him and they enjoyed it and they didn't get hurt. Um, you know, that that's nice, but that really doesn't reflect on, on this particular case. Maybe that's what happened then. But, um, and you know, what's also interesting is that um, this woman, when, she, when they were in the bar, this woman told, um, they met another Marine in the bar and he protected her, you know, when he, he didn't like it when um, uh, when Raymond, when McLeod, when McLeod, he didn't like it when McLeod was, was trying to choke her or slapped her. And um, so there, you know, and then there's the surveillance of them going into the apartment building right. when he was being rough with her. So it's not like, um, it's not like they lay down into bed and said, you want to do this? And she said, yes. And I mean, you know, this is just really aggressive, probably, um, you know, possibly fueled in part at least by the alcohol. Um, but he has this history that really, plus fleeing consciousness of guilt. So right. I, I, right, I, I think, 
I think this is, you know, clearly not just uh, consensual rough sex. Dr. Carol Lieberman, we love uh, your expertise on this program. We've got to have you back as this case uh, was held for court at that preliminary hearing. So it's moving on up in the system for trial. Uh, we'll talk about it again soon. Thank you so much. Sure. Be sure to follow Dr. Carol on social and uh, we'll see her back here soon.